Uh, all right. So um, uh, the topic of my talk is to uh, to tell you uh, one uh, project I'm actually working on. It's an ongoing project. Uh, uh, this project is about uh, fraud detection. Uh, in particular, um, the, the type of fraud we're interested is uh, it's called uh, user impersonification. Uh, this means that uh, imagine that uh, a, a fake user, a bad user, has your credentials to access your web uh, bank account. Uh, the, these algorithms, these models, has to sort of detect that uh, the user who's accessing the bank account is not the real user. All right, and the way we want to to tackle this problem is to analyze um, keystroke dynamics. So the dynamic patterns extracted from uh, uh, typing um, patterns of the real user, all right? Uh, so, of course, uh, this is uh, uh, a, a very uh, strong limitation because there are many, many cases in which this approach won't work considering some bank account uh, access systems. So, for instance, we're not able to detect um, user impersonification frauds in cases the the bank account system uh, provides a sort of vitro keyboard, uh, scrambling the keyboard, and so there's no typing involved in into the access. All right. So, um, but uh, saying that, uh, I'm going to tell you, um, I, I want to share with you my experience with this project, uh, especially um, for those of you who are not very into the machine learning pipelines, uh, just to, 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 to tell you what are the typical problems you may tackle in this kind of uh, problems and projects. Uh, so we started, I'm going to show you this. Uh, we collected the data from uh, 45 users uh, and we built this uh, application uh, which was meant to record uh, keystroke typings uh, from um, web, all right? We also have another App, uh, mobile app, so we want to have data collection from web browsers and um, a mobile mobile application. All the users had to type their username. Each user has a user ID, uh, and all of them have um, the same password, all right? Which is ten characters long. Considering also that you have to press uh, some. Uh, 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 keyboard uh, to, to do the uppercase. All right, so saying that, I'm going to show you all the uh, notebooks I, I, I prepared and so to, to tell you all this uh, journey along this data. So, um, and uh, the different models I've, I've tried and so on and so forth. So, um, first of all, uh, the very first step I did was uh, feature data preparation. Uh, and so uh, we managed to collect the data from the user. We saved them in JSON format. And so the, ver the very first thing was to process these features, so uh, these raw data, and transform them into features. Uh, so um, we have um, two different sets of features, uh, in particular four, but I'm going to tell you the difference. Uh, we have web features, so those collected from the browsers, and app features, those collected... Oh, sorry, this is very tiny. I'm sorry. I'm going to reduce this. All right, maybe it's better. And all right, sorry about that. Okay, so start with this. Um, okay, so I have web features and app features. So I used heavily pandas and uh, to, to load the data. So the, the, the features we have collected from raw data are these four. These four features are uh, taken from the literature. So we want to uh, record according to each typing, um, uh, the dwell time, the flight time, the up up time and the down down time. These are the definitions. So the dwell time refers to the amount of time spent between pressing and releasing one single key, fly time uh, pressing and releasing two successive, successive keys. And these two metrics are called uh, digraph metrics because they just consider two keys. You can also consider more than two keys. Uh, up, up time, down, down time are uh, more, more or less the same. They just consider key up and key down 
uh, time uh, intervals. So we extracted the web features, all right? Uh, so this following code is just to show you that uh, originally uh, we have data in this format. We have uh, we had data in this format. So we have uh, from JSON files we had uh, nested JSON objects, uh, and so they were uh, quite uh, difficult to pass for pandas, uh, at least uh, in my opinion. So uh, what I did was using this flatten dict. Uh, and so we all, all, these are all the, fee, the, key, the keys we have. We have uh, data for password field, for username field, and so all the features. And more, moreover, we also record some deletions, but I'm not uh, yet using it. Uh, so deletions refer to the cases where uh, even if the user, le even if the typing led to uh, a successful login, the user may have d done some uh, cancellations during the typing. And we also record it. Um, so, uh, and these are the other um, keys, and these are very important. Uh, so, we managed to have 45 different users uh, accessing both the web and the app, uh, mobile app interfaces. Um, they were asked to type um, the, the password uh, in um, uh, 45, uh, sorry, 50 user, 45 sessions. Each session had, had to contain 10 repetitions of the typing, all right? And so we ask the user to do one session at a time, so 10 repetition in, in a row, all right? Uh, and so we have recorded repetition ID and session ID and user ID, so we can distinguish all the cases from the row data. Uh, just use flatten dict, which is a very, kind, very useful package to uh, flatterize um, uh, a dictionary. So yeah, so very boilerplate code just to compact the, the, the data structured we have in JSON into one single level of dictionary. And so then we can build our pandas data frame uh, using from records. And so this is very, um, this is very useful. So apart from this, uh, th so the very first step we did was feature data preparation. And so I, I just processed all the JSON file and stored into flatten JSON using pandas, so I can better manage data processing afterwards. So uh, now the more important and probably the very the very important step in this kind of project are uh, feature data analysis and and filtering. So the, once you have sort of stored the data you want, the very first thing you have to do, and this is my my general advice for any of you initially um, starting to to work in this kind of field, uh, is to take a look at the data. So the very first step you do is, OK, I'm going to process this data. Uh, I don't really care how I want to gather them. I want to consider all the features, some of them. Are, these are uh, s second steps. The very first one is, take a look at the data. And so uh, I, I basically load the data, and uh, I'm going to, to, to show you this notebook, but this notebook uh, has been changed, uh, I can tell you, four times uh, at least, because every time I did some pre-processing, some th something uh, came up, which was uh, some data were missing, some uh, extraction from the raw data was wrong, and so on and so forth. So um, what I did was to... Um, do some, in this case, I just are uh, recording password data. So I'm not, I'm for, for now, I'm not considering username field. And, um, and so um, uh, I, I'm just, the first thing I did was to uh, calculate the most common frequency. So just to be sure that the, the length of the repetitions were all the same for all the data. And so I, I realized that uh, the most common frequency of of uh, features is eight for all of them, apart from dwell time. But this is expected because of how the the, the feature is defined. Um, and this is this this was this was necessary because not all the the the, the sequences extracted uh, had the same length, and so I had to filter noisy data in the in the, in the very first step. Uh, and this has been for many reasons. For instance, uh, the user had use the mouse during the typing and so the recording of the uh, the recording the, the, in the very initial steps of the web application uh, was wrong and so we had to discuss some data. 
Um, we did, I did these for both web features and um, app features. And afterwards, I did a sort of ranking of user. Uh, I wanted to um, rank all the, the 50 users we had according to the ratio of how many of their data corresponds to this most common length of repetition. And so, for instance, for the very first one here, in considering downtime, time, uh, user 29, ID, the 29th uh, ID uh, has a total of all the, the, the length of the repetitions of the correct length. But for instance, the second one has two repetitions with a different length. So a length different from height. So I'm going to discard this data because I don't want to, to process rubbish. I, I want to, since I, 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 I want to uh, be sure that when I'm going to, to compare these features from data, I have to be sure that I'm actually comparing apples with apples. And so the dimensions must match. And so this is something you, t this is a bunch of work I did uh, to, to start the learning process, but this is definitely required. Uh, and so this is the case for up to time, all the other features. So I just want to, to uh, go over with it, uh, this, uh, this part of the notebook. And so then uh, after that, I wanted to filter out users having less than the 50% of their repetitions of that length. Um, after different changes to the feature extraction process, uh, the web data has no uh, user having less than 50%. But uh, this is the case for app features. Uh, so let me go there. So for instance, take a look at this. We have these user having exactly zero repetition. So of course here there's a problem yet into the feature extraction process and so we, uh, we have to take a look at it. Uh, in this project actually we have a, diff a very uh, unusual uh, separation of duties. So um, uh, uh, me, myself and, and my colleagues are involved into the uh, learning process. The feature extraction is not made pr uh, by us. So, but I, I did, in any case, this feature data processing because it's, it's definitely required uh, before starting anything. So after that, uh, okay, uh, time shifted is not very uh, important. Basically, it's a, it's a different way how we calculate the, um, the, the timings when deletions uh, are um, um, happening uh, during the, uh, the, the data structure. Um, and so we're filtering out this uh, rubbish user. And all right, so feature analysis. So take a look at the data, what this data looks like. And so uh, I'm just plotting data considering the uh, top ranked user. All right, so take a look at this. So uh, I'm uh, plotting data for the web. All right, considering this feature, which is dwell time. And so taking a look at this, you would see some sort of regularity for these user. Let me, what is it? Oh, I'm sorry. What is the other one? Toolbar. All right. So take a look at this. So these are well time. Uh, there are some outliers here, so you can spot them uh, at glance. Uh, and so maybe these are noisy data, but this is totally fine. Uh, this is the dwell time for this user for on the web, and this is the dwell time for the same user on mobile devices. So totally different features and totally different trends. Uh, these are quite uh, regular for this user. Maybe this is a very a customer one, um, and on the mobile they're totally different. So we expect to have, uh, so we cannot mix them up. We have to use different learning for both of them. Maybe we can ensemble them in the end. Uh, so these are all the features. Fly time on the web from the same user and fly time on app. So I, I just want to move on just a bit. Um, down down time, still some outliers. And so uh, after that, I wanted to, to do a couple of things before moving to the learning step of the project. So after that, so this is still data. I also pl plotted data for the best ranked user in the app ranking, which was different from the other ranking. Two minutes, all right. So uh, I just want to show you this. 
I wanted to, to see if some clustering may do the job before, learning, before doing some sort of supervised learning. Hopefully not, because this is what we expect. But let's take a look at it. So uh, first of all, I used uh, SciPy clustering. Uh, in particular, to, to, to build a cluster, I use hierarchical single linkage clustering uh, uh, using um, these complexity invariant distance. Uh, so this uh, function has been defined as a similarity function, distance function <coughs> has been defined uh, for uh, uh, series data. And um, so considering the very first 10 repetition of the dwell time, so this outlier we can spot at glance, this is the result of the clustering. So it's uh, immediate to identify that if we cut this, this out, it's very easy to, to, to remove this noise. But if you want to, re and so for the dwell time, it could be easy to do that. So these are all the features in the dwell time. And so if we repeat this process, this is a sort of compact dendrogram representation. Um, it's very easy to get all the data and remove the noise from here. So that's fine. Uh, but if we repeat it for app features, which was a total mess, it's less, uh, uh, it, it's very, it's more complicated. So you, you cannot rely uh, heavily on these uh, clustering filtering um, to, to detect outliers. Uh, and finally, uh, I also wanted to, to see if uh, data from two different users uh, overlaps. And so he, I just tried with two uh, totally um, random user um, doing a k-means clustering this, in this case. Now I know that I am expecting two clusters because I have two users, but the k-means was not able to distinguish any of the two using the same feature, of course. The clustering was not able to do anything. So all the data were in one single cluster. So uh, in, a, in a total unsupervised way, it may be quite difficult to approach the, the problem. So concluding, yes, thank you very much. Uh, uh, what I did apart preparing the data was to uh, to tackle the problem in two ways. The very first one was you tackling the problem as a classification problem. So I wanted to classify the user. And so you have a 50 class classification problem. I run uh, some uh, models. Uh, so the, the way you can tackle the problem is twofold, in my opinion. You can tackle it as a classification problem, and you can tackle it as an anomaly detection problem. So the anomaly detection problem, the setting is different in the case that, uh, my, my time is over, uh, yeah, uh, the setting is different because uh, you want to consider, um, you want to use data from the user and use other uh, users' data as anomalies, all right? In classification, you pass all the data and just classify it. Okay. All right. Uh, if you have any further questions for Valerio, uh, you can ask him during the lunch break. Uh, now it's lunch, so you can. Yeah. Go sorry ahead and about grab that. Lunch.